Hello, welcome to my e-learning tutorial video. My name is Ding Chuen, and in this video, I will be explaining in very basic terms how electric dipoles help us relate ECG signals to the different phases in a cardiac cycle. An electrocardiogram, or ECG, basically records the electrical potentials arising within the heart. The potential changes are measured by electrodes placed on the body surface. ECG records only the electrical activity and is not a measure of the mechanical behavior of the heart. So now, the question is, how do these electrical dipoles come about? First, let's imagine that we have a strip of cardiac muscle. While the muscle cell is at rest, an active transport mechanism involving interaction of ion channels and ion pumps in the cell membrane maintains an excess of positive sodium and calcium ions on the outside, thus making the outside of the cell relatively positive charge to the inside. By the same mechanism, excess negative chloride ions are maintained inside the cell, resulting in the inside being relatively negative to the outside. This results in an electrical potential difference between the inside and outside of the cell and at this stage is known as the resting membrane potential. The cardiac myocytes are now activated by an electrical signal. In the working heart, this electrical signal is an action potential propagating from a neighboring cell. Once initiated, the depolarization will propagate on the cell membrane in every direction, and then from cell to cell. Stimulation of one end of a myocardial cell initiates a wave of depolarization that propagates through the cell. At a certain moment, half of the cell will be depolarized, being negatively charged on the outer surface of the membrane, and the other half of the cell, which is not yet depolarized, the membrane's outer surface will be positively charged. The opposite charges of the cell surface will form an electric dipole. These cardiac dipoles can be represented by electrical vectors. If the electric field is recorded by extracellular electrodes, a positive potential will be recorded when the vector points towards the positive electrode. If the vector points toward the negative electrode, a negative potential is recorded. Now that we've seen what happens in a strip of cardiac muscle, the same concept can be applied to the whole heart. This is a very simplistic diagram of the human heart. The heartbeat is initiated and controlled by electrical impulses that are generated and conducted by specialized myocardial cells. Activation normally begins in the sinoatrial node, also known as the SA node located in the right atrium of the heart. Because of its rapid firing rate, the SA node normally serves as the heart's pacemaker. The wave of depolarization initiated by the SA node is propagated through atrial myocardium first to the right atrium, then the left atrial wall. After encountering a delay in the atrial ventricular or AV node located in the septum close to the tricuspid wall, the wave of depolarization enters the ventricles through the His bundle. The His bundle bun branches into the Purkinje system, a subandrocardial network of rapidly conducting cells, which then synchronizes atrial ventricular activation. Repolarization then occurs, causing the heart to relax, and then the cycle continues. The ECG records the potential charges generated by the activity of the heart using electrodes placed on the surface of the body. The potential change recorded by specifically connected electrodes is called a lead. Each lead is assigned with an axis and each axis has an orientation. By convention, the axis points towards the positive electrodes. The projection of cardiac vectors as a function of time on the axis corresponding to a lead is the ECG trace recorded in that particular lead. If the orientation of the projected vector corresponds to the orientation of the axis, 
a positive wave is recorded. If opposite, then a negative wave is recorded. Now because the human body is a non-homogeneous conductor, it is necessary to standardize the lead group in lead systems. In case of a standard ECG, three lead systems are used. The limb lead, the augmented limb lead, and the chest lead. If necessary, other leads can be recorded using specific electrode locations. In the interest of time, we will only be looking at one of the lead systems, which is the limb lead. The limb lead uses three active electrodes and a grounding electrode. The electrode placement developed by Antoven is standard. The leads are at the right arm, left arm, left foot, and there is a grounding electrode on the right foot. The electrode placement forms the Antoven's triangle, and using information gathered from other lead systems, we'd be able to obtain an ECG signal. And that's it. It's that simple. Thank you very much for watching this. I hope the video tutorial was helpful. Have a great day.